Uh, right. Hello, uh, everybody. Welcome to today's uh, Trend Signal Trading Podcast. It's the 1st of June 2020. Uh, my name is Adrian Boothy. I'm the head of trading here at Trend Signal. And joined with me today is our chief analyst, Jerry Miller. Hello, Jerry. Uh, morning. Morning. Um, today, we've got an awful lot to go through um, because Brexit is back on the uh, agenda. Um, boring, boring. But, you know, it's uh, it's got to be talked about again. Uh, the economies are very much restarting. Um, schools back today for certain classes in primary school and so on. Um, a lot of markets are back and, you know, a lot of, a lot of companies, a lot of shops back restarting. So that's um, positive uh, for the economy and also tech stocks leading the way. We can talk about the tech stocks um, very much leading the way in the US stock market as well. So um, quite a lot of topics to go through. Uh, but Jerry, why don't you talk uh, us through initially about uh, I guess what's what's been happening uh, over the last week or so um, we've just closed out a month um, but quite positive for the stock market last month wasn't it yeah another positive uh, month I mean uh, this risk recovery as we call it where uh, after the horrendous falls um, when the pandemic uh, became a pandemic uh, and all these uh, Western economies and all general global economies went into lockdown um, it's been a, a turbulent time, but for the last two months, stocks have been rising and uh, another positive month for uh, the Standard & Poor's 500, S&P 500, up 6%. So uh, obviously aided and abetted by uh, all that central bank largesse and also governments throwing, uh, we used to say throwing the kitchen sink at it, but I think they've thrown the kitchen sink, the washing machine, the dishwasher and everything at it. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah all, all, all very interesting. Yeah. Well, the QE program is now something like sort of 80 to um, 120 um, you know, a month, isn't it? You know, over in the States, it's, you know, it's huge numbers oh, uh, huge. that they're talking yeah. about. Yeah. And um, in, and if anything, rates are now pretty much down to zero, whereas US interest rates were among the highest not that long ago. Um, well, they were. The, they were. Go, go, go back a year and a half, Adrian. The difference was a chasm, really. Uh, not like in the old days when there was a, a big sort of differential between uh, currencies, but um, now they're all crushed again. All rates are pretty much the same. Uh, and some economies, perhaps in the UK, we might be considering negative rates. Um, certainly our gilts have gone to uh, negative yield on the three and five years. So the government is borrowing money and then paying back less after five years, <laughs> which is they're joining a very big club, by the way. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of governments uh, are in that um, uh, position. Fortunate. I'm not saying it's fortunate because it means the economies are doing horrendously. Um, anyway, uh, back to last uh, week, as you want me to talk about, um, mm. it was U really US China relations that I think were on the front pages for quite a bit of the last week, um, but they still went ahead equities, didn't they? Weird. Um, yeah, yeah and, and and Trump announced on Friday, I think it was Trump or Mike Pompeo, one of the two, that the US is going to remove Hong Kong's special state as, a, as this semi-autonomous region in China. In fact, I think Kong, Hong Kong's referred to as a special administrative region, uh, but I think this is all following the move by Beijing to uh, implement this uh, new security law in the province, which is yeah, it's quite interesting. But, you know, then overnight, Sunday night, Monday morning t today, uh, Hang Seng jumped three percent. And you think, hang on a second. I thought you said Trump's going to remove Hong Kong's special trading status. Uh, and, and Hang Seng jumped three percent, I think. And it turns out investors are relieved that the U.S. didn't impose sanctions on China. Uh, obviously, people were fearing something I didn't realize, actually. Uh, but uh, I think it's as much that and perhaps more the fact that the Hang Seng was really oversold. It had been taken a right old drubbing last week. And I think uh, uh, this is uh, just a little bit of uh, profit taking, maybe, or um, people picking up and picking up some uh, cheap stock. But uh, pity the poor old Hong Kong residents, Adrian, they, they, they battled COVID-19 and they've actually done a really good job. I know all about it, as I said, my daughter's out there, but they, they have done a really good job. And they're now battling the Chinese government and the protests uh, are back again on the streets and uh, expressing their feeling toward Beijing, which is uh, not particularly friendly. Um, no, I guess uh, with a lot of violent protests going on, it's a different kind of lockdown for a lot of people, I suppose, isn't it? That's, that's um, going on. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I could see some people, some of the Hong Kong Chinese would like some sort of order restored because their businesses have really struggled with all the protests on the streets all last year. It killed a lot of the hospitality industry, the hotels, the, you know, the tourism. No one wants to go to Hong Kong if it's racked with tear gas and demonstrations. Although, mm. 
that's not really the case. I mean, I've been there a couple of times when it's going on and you, you, you don't come across it at all. Uh, but it is, it's a headline and that's not what they like. But um, uh, anyway, uh, they crack on um, and we'll see how, what effect the sort of international pressure on Beijing has. Um, anyway, but as I said, despite those tensions uh, over Hong Kong, uh, there has been this recovery in equities. Uh, so last week, probably the best week of May, uh, uh, one of the four weeks in May, um, the Dow Jones and the S&P, they're up, uh, I should think, uh, three and three quarter percent on the Dow, three percent on the S&P, DAX up 4.63 percent. Uh, so all doing well. Poor old FTSE, not quite as good. Uh, 83 points. Just over 1.4 percent, Adrian. But uh, mm. I just, uh, you know, I think it's really Brexit is starting to uh, sort of concern investors, and I still think the uh, the view that uh, there could be negative interest rates at some stage. But I think these I Brexit think the other thing is, and we, we were talking earlier about the sort of the weighting of the, and we're going to talk about this a bit later, but the sort of the tech stocks that are doing a lot of the, the rallying uh, over in the states. We're not a the FTSE is not a tech heavy um, index, is it? It's a resource index you know, historically. Yeah, um, no. you know, oil and mining, of, yeah. Oil yeah. and mining, exactly. And banks. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And they're all showing, you know, and the banks, you know, as an example, they've, you know, three of the top bankers have come out over the weekend and said that. Um, they reckon a lot of the, uh, I can't remember the exact term uh, used, the type of loans that were being given out to businesses because of the corona, uh, they reckon about 50% of them will uh, default. And, yeah, the business, um, support, the big business yeah. support loans, yeah. yeah. So, you, you know, you've got two of the two or three of the massive sectors in the in the FTSE 100 and they're they're weighing heavy uh, and we don't have an amazon we don't have a, a an apple um no, do we no, uh, no, no we, we don't i mean we were talking earlier in fact the only stock that's done particularly well uh, astrazeneca of course that's in that healthcare t uh, sector uh, and that's like in the states you know the technology and healthcare sectors are the ones that have gone through the roof and that's what's dragged up the rest of the market we've got astrazeneca oh the other pharmaceuticals have done okay but no we we, we don't have tech stocks Adrian that's, mm. that's really it you know um, um, other sectors sorry other um, um, areas of um, our markets uh, the dollar dollar actually fell across the board last week Adrian it uh, I think that there's more sort of risk on another risk recovery where stock markets sort of moved higher as I've just said uh, the euro was up two cents against the uh, against the uh, dollar which is quite that's a big big move actually recently anyway uh, and and i think just looking at the sentiment there's the bullish consensus and it seems that sentiment and positioning has turned positive in the euro for the first time since march and i think this is probably down to the fact that the lockdown has been eased i mean they started the easing of the lockdown three weeks ago three and a half weeks ago in europe um and i think that's having an effect Yes, uh, well, absolutely. And, and just to recap, I know if you've been listening to us for a little while, um, you'll know about sort of what risk on and risk off uh, means. But risk off um, or risk on, sorry, which is kind of what was last week when you're putting risk onto your portfolio. What's going to happen there is you're going to, you know, you're going to buy stocks and you're going to move out of what are seen as sort of safer uh, assets, which is the dollar. So what you typically see is you know, this movement of equities moving up and the dollar moving down uh, yeah. tends to be the sort of relationship. And there's other relationships there alongside, but we, we won't cover that in detail today. I think we've got enough enough other content to go through. Uh, and yeah. what about um, what about the pound? We've got sort of Brexit back on the um, the agenda now, haven't we? Yeah, there's more and more chat in the um, papers over the weekend. Barnier uh, warning Johnson and David Frost, the, the negotiator uh, over Brexit, that there just shouldn't be any backsliding over the declaration that was agreed uh, to um, for uh, this to take place, for Brexit to happen. And I just think there's a there's a, a bit of sparring going on. And, and Adrian, I'm always reminded that the EU or the Eurozone, sorry, agree things. Or so the EU, not the Eurozone, but the EU agree things at the last minute. It's all this. Well, there's no rush. Let's. And then in the last minute, like Brexit, like the agreement that Johnson got in the end, it was all hammered out in the last few days. Yeah. And, and so it's almost like, you know, this has got to happen in June because I, I don't know, um, we haven't talked about it before, but the EU and the UK have got until July the 1st if they want to agree on an extension. And I know that's something that Johnson and Dominic Cummings 
yes, he has another job apart from driving around the country. Um, <laughs> and he, he is intent on ensuring that Britain do not have any extension beyond the end of the year. But if they are to get an extension, it can only happen by July the 1st if they are going to decide on an extension. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to have to happen because once we pass July the 1st, then there can't be an extension, apparently. Don't know why, but that's the deal. Uh, but it's written yeah, right. in law that we leave at the end of December anyway, Adrian. So I'm not altogether sure what's happening there. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely the case that there's, there's going to be these huge cries for certainty over what will happen, what will happen. We're never going to know until literally the 11th hour, uh, no. are we? No, we're not. And, and, and cries over what, you know, we want certainty. Talk about uncertainty un within this pandemic. I mean, no one knows what's happening these days. I mean, really, where, you know, the, the, the financial markets seem disconnected re with reality, certainly with what people are feeling on the ground and some of the evidence from, you know, work has been furloughed and unemployment data. But hey, that's don't buck the but don't buck the markets as they say uh, but well, it's think interesting about this, you know think about how difficult it is getting them all around the table uh together um and having a proper conversation all these leaders just imagine it on a zoom call um because they probably not going to be able to travel as much as they would have uh, expected no, to have done. No. well i know it's going to be interestingly problematic uh, i know it. trump threw his uh, toys out of the pram about the, the g7 said oh, i think it's an outdated thing anyway uh, because he tried to organize one at the end of june and merkel said respectfully said no i can't make it <laughs> <laughs> it's like who the hell are you to tell me you can't make it uh, but anyway uh, just going back to brexit agent just, just to finish off there it, it's interesting people ask me well um, if it's if brexit's not going to turn out so good do you think sterling is a bit overvalued then with respect to what's to come uh, and i don't think there's much really and much positive sentiment built into Brexit right now anyway, not with, with regards to Brexit, because everyone knows the talks have been not progressing particularly well. So I mean, if they, they continue to not progress particularly well, I'm, I'm not sure Sterling will fall because of that. It might be because of other things like talk of, you know, negative interest rates and stuff, but uh, mm. yeah. Okay, um, and what about uh, the on the commodity side, uh, Jerry? It was sort of a month ago that we, yeah. uh, just over a month ago, we had some interesting news, didn't we? Uh, yeah, it's all, uh, it's it's all. Gosh, didn't that look like an obvious buy? And uh, as I discussed with you uh, it, during the time, I said if you could buy a, a petrol tanker now, thirty-three thousand liters get one and fill it up with diesel or petrol, you'll make a fortune and you would have done. But um, it's not safe to own a petrol tank and park it in your driveway, I suspect. Uh, not full of 33,000 litres of gasoline, that's for sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, gold, uh, gold, uh, the first one we want to look at, that's the sort of a risk haven asset that you were just talking about with respect to risk on, risk off. Um, that's a, a, a an instrument that tends to fare badly when equities recover, when people are putting their markets into uh, riskier assets. Gold tends to be a hedge and a, and, a, and a safe haven, but it didn't do too badly last week. I mean, it fell only about four bucks, which is just quarter of a percent, but I think it was probably offset by the weaker dollar that we've mm -hmm. talked about. Um, Oil, yeah, oil. Good point. Uh, oil. Well, uh, I think the rise in oil. Uh, there was some pretty horrendous um, uh, storage numbers last week from the Energy Administration in the states. Um, but that's just uh, domestic oil. Uh, but I think oil just continues to trade higher, and I think that's reflecting uh, much of the optimism, um, really, uh, in the yeah. um, in the stock markets. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of the, taking the dog out for a walk this morning, the cars were, the, the roads were noticeably busier. Um, and I, I sort of, the end of my road is a relatively busy sort of intersection of a couple of country roads. And um, there was just loads of cars going past. And I think a lot of people are going back to work. Consumption is going to start to increase. And uh, we're seeing that everywhere. You know, primary schools back um, to some extent uh, today. Um, you know, I know the markets are reopening, um, like the you know fruit and veg markets, outdoor markets are reopening today. A lot of shops are reopening. Um, and so, you know, this, there is going to be a lot more demand for, um, you know, from cars, aren't there? Simple, really. Yeah. And, and also um, talking of cars, the car showrooms have opened today again. They have. Yeah, uh, absolutely. They have. Although uh, I was listening to uh, Wake Up to Money this morning and the, the guy from one of the 
who runs a, a few of the Land Rover dealerships, um, and they've got like a one-way system within the uh, within the showroom. You can't go and sit in it, but you can actually have your own uh, test drive, and you can take the car out yourself and. You know, um, but, rather oh, than going in and touching everything inside and sitting in and going, wasn't this nice? And then stepping out of the car to disinfect yeah. it. Yeah, I think that yeah. was the Lancaster dealership actually that you're referring to. But the, that's interesting. I mean, gosh, the, 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 the car industry in the just in in Europe and the US must be just on its knees. I mean, 97% contraction in vehicle sales. Um, the previous month, uh, the UK produced 115 cars in May. <laughs> I mean, it's 115. Well, but everything was shut. I don't even know how they managed to make 115. Someone must have gone in at the, with bored and decided to finish off a car or two. Uh, but no, I, 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 it's just extraordinary. Um, but you know, things have to get back to normal slowly. Uh, and the people who are now thinking, okay, well, now I can see a how uh, I can view a property. Maybe I'll buy a house. I, I'll, I'll think about moving. Uh, you know, my car needs replacing. I mean, personally, my car needs servicing, Adrian. Uh, and it's yeah. said, it's said, you know, service since March. And I think, well, that's fine. I can't get it serviced. <laughs> well, a lot of the garages have been open, just not the main dealership garages. Right. Uh, okay, you know, like an Audi dealership or whatever, they, they've not been open. But your 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 local sort of back street mechanic has been. Um, well, maybe I should give them a call. Busy. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. I'll give them a call then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Um, okay. Uh, and what about the stocks? We talked earlier about how you know the stock market's been sort of rocking and rolling in the states. Really, they've have a, a hell of a recovery, but. It's not quite as rosy as it might look because there's there's such a broad depth to um, to the stock market. Well, there's a depth to the stock market. It doesn't show everything's quite as rosy as it might look in recovery terms, does it, Jerry? No, it, it's. I mean, we've talked about market breadth before now, and that's how many of the stocks are joining in the the rally or the fall. Um, does the market move represent the health of the whole? stock market are all stocks doing well or or what uh, and and as things stand as we sort of intimated at the beginning of this it's really the technology stocks that are really providing the momentum to us markets and the technology sector in, uh, in the s p 500 is by far and away the largest by market cap um, and also in the russell 3000 which is another index that's a very broad index but in those indices a third remain down at least 30 percent adrian I mean, that's, mm. that's, that's, that's interesting. And a half, half, that's 50% are down 20% still. And that's not where the stock market is. Uh, we're only down, I think, is it 6 or 7% now from the previous highs? So it's recovered a lot, you know, the, the US markets, but not all the stocks have. Why? Well, as we were talking about, it's the successful mega cap stocks that have done really, really well. And we've talked about Amazon, uh, we've talked about the likes of Microsoft, Google, Netflix, all these companies, just huge stocks. And and when, you know, the likes of Amazon puts on, I don't know, quarter of a trillion, that's a lot. I mean, that's more than, I don't know, the three or four of the top companies uh, in the UK combined in total capitalization. Well, we were earlier about how, um, we think it's, and I'm not 100% sure on this, but maybe AstraZeneca is maybe perhaps the biggest stock uh, in the FTSE now, um, yeah. which it never was sort of really, you know, it's always been a big one, but it's never been, you know, anywhere near the top. But of course, a lot of the ones that were at the top, your BP, your Shell, uh, your HSBC, you know, they've taken uh, a bit of a kicking, whereas AstraZeneca has been um, moving pretty nice. strong, but 113, you know, a billion. It's uh, it's a mere dot uh, in the valuation of some of these some of these other companies, isn't these it? These technology stocks. You're you're right. I mean, but to be in technology and healthcare, that's that's really the flavour at the moment. I mean, you saw bounce uh, bounces in uh, some of the travel stocks, um, the likes of EasyJet and EasyJet and Ryanair. Uh, but you know, such, after they announced that they were going to start resuming flights again, but you know, and then you realize that everyone says, oh, I'm not going to fly. Are you going to fly? No, I'm not going to fly. <laughs> and you just think, yeah. who's going to fly? Yeah. Uh, and and what, what uh, social distancing and um, COVID-19 security measures are they going to have? But I'm sure they'll have worked it out. But 
Um, now, for long term, for, for, for the real strength and momentum in these markets, you've just got to look at the technology and healthcare stocks. Uh, and that's, as you said quite rightly, that's the reason why the FTSE has struggled, apart from the likes of uh, Glaxo and AstraZeneca. Uh, we don't have any technology stocks. Well, it was, it was reading an interesting article uh, the other day that it was saying about how the sort of the relative peaks and troughs, you know, prior to 2000, um, you know, the, uh, in terms of against earnings. So typically you'd, you'd have a trough of around sort of, I think it was five or eight percent as would be the typical trough um, for earnings uh, for the valuation. On a, on a pullback in the stock market, whereas now um, we're, we're trading much higher than that, you know, at least sort of 10% would be a typical trough. Um, and that's because techs, tech companies typically trade at a much higher multiple uh, of their earnings. Um, and, you know, previous sort of peaks of maybe 15%, whereas now you might be a peak of much higher than that. I can't remember the exact numbers, but it's effectively yeah. saying because of the because of the size of the, the tech uh, sector now, um, it's having a distorted impact on what we would usually see as the peaks and troughs against earnings as an average. Uh, it's yeah. distorting it um, upwards. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at corrections thinking, well, that hasn't really corrected that much like it might have done 20 years ago. But that's because we've got these mega cap tech stocks that just are in a different world. Uh, really. Yeah, it, 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 you've brought, you're right in calling it a different world. It's like there are two markets within the market. Yeah. There's, there's all the stocks and then there's the technology and healthcare stocks. And they're in a different, if you plotted there, recovery versus the rest of the sectors it, they'd stick out like a like a like a the opposite of a sore thumb the others of the sore thumb these have just performed so well <laughs> yeah yeah fascinating times and um yeah. i guess uh some money to be made if we're in the in the right markets like um it's just we were talking about elon musk earlier weren't we he's he's got yeah. a nice boost lately yeah i i i find his I certainly find his SpaceX business fascinating, and uh, I, I was the one, one of the few, or one of the many actually, that probably watched the uh, the Falcon takeoff on uh, Saturday. Uh, and there were friends of mine who who actually saw the ship flying uh, over the UK, and I, I I couldn't see it, but I just, people have sent me pictures of it, and I thought, gosh, it looked like a star. Um, uh, anyway, um, the news from uh, about Elon Musk is not to do with its SpaceX program, but his his. Um, car company, Tesla, electric car company based in California. Um, and there are a lot of Tesla skeptics around, but I think um, Elon Musk has proved them, a lot of them wrong, but he's just triggered a bonus payment of 1.7 million shares. Uh, and that's because of the price performance in the shares. But the value of those shares is 775 million, Adrian, 775 million. That'll do. Yeah, quite. It will do. Uh, and it, Ironic, it, given how a couple of weeks ago we were talking about his Gerald Ratner moment, saying that the share prices were too right. high, which is yeah. just, just which weird. it doesn't make any sense. Bearing in mind, um, he his reward is there. There are a, a number of metrics, not just the share price, actually, Adrian. But um, he's obviously hit these metrics. Um, but what's interesting is that his award of $775 million worth of stock is more than the aggregate value of all the profits that uh, Tesla has made to date, uh, which I find extraordinary. Um, and that's course, just adding up the, the, the profitable quarters, isn't it? It's not adding up the losses that have been in there. It's just, yeah. the, it's yeah, not net, it's just the winning quarters. Well, if you just yeah. sum up the net income from all of um, the yeah. profitable quarters dating back to the, I think it goes back to the fourth quarter of 2008, uh, and you find that the company has made uh, 748 million, and that's according to S&P, Standard & Poor's. Uh, but uh, there you go. It, 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 it's just, and, and you know, but he, he's a bright guy. He's, someone said he's now worth about 45, 43, 45 billion dollars now. Um, and his SpaceX company, which we were just talking about, uh, that following the successful launch of this uh, Falcon rocket on Saturday with that uh, Dragon module. The rocket's owned by um, uh, NASA, uh, by um, uh, SpaceX. And I think the module is uh, NASA um, and it's just secured its long-term future, I guess, assuming it's, you know, all this has gone to plan, which it has, uh, and they're gonna be transporting NASA astronauts uh, into space and, and probably other private space travelers as well. It's uh, extraordinary. You know, I'm not sure what the ticket price will be, Adrian. It's probably a couple of months' pay. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's, uh, 
no corona in mars i guess so maybe yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. let's all go there yeah. let's go to mars yeah, yeah. no I, I understand it's in the tens of millions to go into space so uh, just for a ticket um anyway but uh, what's tens interesting as well spacex it's valued at they reckon more than 40 billion now um which is not bad for a guy who made his money in uh, elon musk made his money in paypal made I don't know, mm. 225 million, um, million, something like that. Uh, put it into SpaceX, put it into Tesla. Uh, I think he invested 100 million, and that was his initial investment in SpaceX in 2012. Yeah, that's worth 40 billion. Of course, there's been a few others that invested along the way, but uh, SpaceX is one of the world's most valuable private companies. Just extraordinary. Well, 40 billion dollars is about the size of Vodafone on the UK stock market now. So. Yeah, and that's one of our big ones. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. yeah, remarkable, absolutely remarkable. Um, I do, I do, I do find it interesting with the sort of the electric cars. I mean, I was sort of talking about this to, to someone over the weekend, and I'm sort of tempted for my next car to be an electric one. But you've got to have the infrastructure there, and I think you know, I know that some new homes are being built with the you know the supercharged points in their garages now. That's one of the things we were talking about, and um, that's clever. But you know you, you you need that because otherwise if you've got a 13 amp um, fuse plug whatever the terminology is um, it's going to take all day to to charge it whereas you need you know much stronger amps to be able to um, get a decent charge uh, on yeah it. that's right um, I mean uh, uh, you can charge a lot of these electric cars now they'll get 80 they'll get sort of 80 percent of their charge in about 45 minutes yeah. um, whereas on a trickle charger it's, it's all night I mean it is what it you know, it does what it says it trickles the charge in um uh, it, I, it, it's interesting though i mean my 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 um sister's partner's got a got a tesla uh, and he but he'll go every night and go and fill up at the, the campanile down the road uh or charge up but of course if someone's there and they've only got a couple of charging points you've got to just sit there and wait till they've finished and uh sounds yeah amazing, it's not really i certainly couldn't do that with kids yeah, but he lives I, on I, a road where they haven't got a garage where they could fit a point you know it just can't be done and um, I don't think I'm ready to for that. I think if you live in, in the city, I think electric cars are a must, uh, are a given. But out in the rural Britain, which is where you and I inhabit, Adrian, mm. it's not so convenient if you've got a range of 150 miles on a car. You know, I mean, it's uh, I'm not sure your wife's going to want to run out of electricity <laughs> with three no. screaming kids in the back. Well, if I'm heading back home from the office and then I've got my wife screaming at me and I just say, hang on a second, I've just got to um, just go and you know, power up for an hour. Do you mind? I'm sure she'll love that. Yeah, Maybe that's yeah. all the incentive I need. Maybe I should go and get one tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll support you. <laughs> um, okay, should we quickly go through the calendar, uh, Jerry? Let me yeah, just bring it up. yeah. Yeah, busy all week, actually, um, with the uh, European Central Bank, in fact, two other banks as well. And also, obviously, the employment data in the States. So it's the, you know, the first Friday of the new month always heralds the uh, that sort of data. Um, anyway, let's uh, kick off. So um, it's Monday. Uh, it's this WIT um, Monday today. So it's a public holiday across most of Europe, Spain, Italy, Germany, France. Uh, so a lot of markets shut uh just for the one day uh but uh, we're open and there are some other european markets open um yeah. uh, later on this afternoon we've got the uh first pmi data out from the states we've got the um, uh, manufacturing then the services later on this week but uh, this is the uh, ism manufacturing pmi data which is the past we've explained it's an index uh, ending above 50 means the sector is expanding ending below 50 means it's contracting uh, we are recovering a little bit uh, 43 and a half um, is that any good well it's better but it's still well below 50 Adrian so um, yeah. it depends where it, it, it turns out uh, these numbers are just so difficult to predict and I think even Forex Factory where we get this data from you know sometime I, I, I'm looking at other uh, estimates uh, forecasts and they're, they're not they're not the same and that's because uh, there's just um, no one quite knows you know we're in that sort of panel um, doesn't it but you see yeah. the difference between expectations or forecasts and actuals uh, yeah. last month yeah um, you know it's huge, quite a bit better than expected yeah yeah and there's a huge huge difference which of course you don't normally have but that just goes to show just how hard it is to measure uh, yeah really yeah um, yeah uh, Aussie yeah. rates 
Um, uh, yeah, so Tuesday. Um, well, we'll uh, wake up on Tuesday morning and find out exactly what's happened. But Australia's actually done pretty well. They've been really relaxing their uh, lockdown um, conditions, and uh, a lot of uh, the Australian economy is getting back uh, uh, into into gear. Uh, and they're quite a bit ahead of, certainly ahead of the UK, and probably ahead of uh, much of uh, Europe. And they've had, they've certainly suffered a lot less in terms of infection and death from the COVID-19 um, pandemic. Um, but unlikely that we're going to see any policy change, um, as I say, because I think they're going to wait and see um, what effect the easing of the lockdown is going to have on these numbers. Um, uh, so, uh, and that's pretty much what's going to happen with the Bank of Canada um, um, meeting as well the following day on Wednesday, Adrian. So I might as well just touch on that. It's pretty much mm. similar there, really, except that the Bank of Canada, they tend to take their cue more from the Federal Reserve just over the border in the United States. So put it this way, if the Fed are going to cut rates, uh, I'm not saying they're going to, the, it'll it'll force the Bank of Canada's hand. So, uh, but I don't see the Bank of Canada doing uh, making any change in policy at all, really. Um, anyway, uh, back up to um, uh, Wednesday, or also Wednesday, I should say, the ADP uh, non-farm payroll change. Uh, we sort of look at this, Adrian, because it gives us a bit of a pointer to what's what's going to happen on Friday. But it's that mm -hmm. private payroll company. And the data always seems a little little bit sort of uh, how can I put it, erratic. Uh, but they've certainly been sort of, certainly in, in, in May, the number was pretty accurate compared to uh, uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics that is published uh, on Friday. Um, but we're expecting um, another nine and a half million. It's just, the numbers are horrendous, just horrendous. Uh, anyway, so nine and a half million uh, further job losses there. Um, and that's something, gosh, is it, if it's 10, will it, Will the markets fall if it's eight? Will the market? I I got a feeling that the markets um, are starting to get a little bit stretched now, unless the number is really good. I don't think it's going to help propel the market uh, up at all, in my opinion. Um, I just wonder, since these numbers are so big either way, that it's probably not going to take too much of a cue anyway. Cause it's it's just bad either way, whichever way you look at it. Yeah, you're 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 right, uh, and the market has sort of been feeding off the fact that we we're now coming out of all this lockdown, except in the States, it's been horrendous, really. Um, uh, it's been so badly managed in, in the United States. Hence all the picking on China to deflect all the attention away from the poor performance that uh, the administration has uh, been charged with about their um, handling of the pandemic. Um, mm. But uh, anyway, um, Thursday, Big uh, day Thursday, Adrian. Um, the monthly policy meeting for the European from the European Central Bank. Really, the eurozone it needs a shot in the arm. Uh, the big problem with the eurozone is that interest rates have been at rock bottom entering the pandemic. So things were slowing up. Uh, there were talk of more and more countries going into recession just without the pandemic. Um, but now we've got this pandemic. You can see um, perhaps. Uh, why that the European Central Bank is considering increasing its quantitative easing program. If you remember the 750 billion that was mm. previous, uh, previously announced a couple of months ago, uh, well, that runs out in October, uh, and they've got to, they can't wait until September to, or August to announce it. They've got to say now what they're going to do because things are still very bad. Um, so they. I think the speculation is that they're going to increase uh, the quantitative easing program by maybe 250 billion, maybe 500 billion. Um, but and, and so the, the perceived wisdom is that it, it, if you flood the market with even more euros, that it would weaken the euro. So if we get a bigger dose of QE, I would expect than expected, I would expect perhaps the euro could um, react a little negatively to that, especially after all the gains it's had in the last um, few days. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. and, and, and we're also going to have, uh, I've got to say that uh, Christine Lagarde, the chairwoman of the European Central Bank, is uh, going to announce all the latest economic pro projections for the trading block. Um, and they're not going to be pretty. Uh, they really are horrendous. Uh, anyway, that's, but it's reality. I think we're, the, the num numbers are bad from all economies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're not going to be drawn over the coals just because of uh, something like this, I suppose, are you? 
not really in their control so much. So, uh, okay, and then we move to the big one uh, on Friday, one thirty, typically the first Friday of the month, isn't it? Um, Non-farm employment change. So, uh, looking at yeah. a fall of eight million. Um, uh, job a fall of eight farm. million. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the thing that just sticks out so badly is that unemployment rate, Adrian, nineteen and a half percent. Well, what were we? Three and a half percent, I think, something like yeah, that, or three point four, maybe. Like yeah, yeah. I mean, we were at we were at multi-decade lows. You had to go back to the 1960s, and it just seemed. I mean, what what can go wrong? What? Well, how about yeah. a pandemic? How about a pandemic? I mean, it's uh, it's just been devastating, and especially in the states because we furlough we furloughed eight million of our workers, so it's not really in our numbers as such but in the us you claim your benefits even though you've been furloughed and a lot of people are getting some uh, pretty juicy uh, handouts from the government that are actually more than what they were getting after taxes when they were employed yeah so uh, it's going to be interesting we talked about you know the problems that rishi sunak our chancellor here in the uk has got of weaning people off the furlough condition um Wow, in the States. I mean, they're so generous. Incredible. Well, I was talking to my neighbor uh, yesterday, and um, she was saying that some of her people at work, they're like, oh, I'm actually quite like being furloughed, to be honest. If I could stay till October, that'd be great. Thank you. I really yeah. want to go back to work. And it wasn't it's, a health perspective, it was just the fact that quite like just <laughs> sitting down and not yeah. doing a whole heap and getting yeah. paid for it. Well, you see, see, see the problem, it, it, there's a cost to all of us because what they're people are doing and they're they're getting our everyone all taxpayers money it's been shared out with everyone and we're all responsible for it as it were and if you're at home being uh, and you're you're being you've been furloughed you're not producing any wealth at all you're not generating any you're not being yeah. productive and that's a cost and we've got eight million people doing that they need to get back to work yeah. you know uh, safely of course but they do need to get back to work and and there's got to be a gradual easing of this lockdown i think the government are probably doing it correctly and there are going to be critics all everywhere should have done more should have done less should have done this should have done that it's it's an impossible position to be a politician now in my opinion uh yeah absolutely uh, one, one thing i do think is interesting with the car companies going back online today um you know i think one of the, the big things was the mortgage holiday and i know that doesn't really save anyone any money in fact it just increases the interest we're gonna have to people are gonna have to pay back at the end of their term more than anything else isn't it but that's the sort of thing that it could actually make quite a difference to people because suddenly you've got that um big benefit to your outgoings that you and uh, people are then going to buy they might still buy a car they might get out a new car mm. lease they might mm. go out and buy a new fridge freezer or do those things because suddenly they've got an injection of cash almost that they that they didn't have mm. um, well especially if you do need a new car aid i mean you're in your house that's it uh, but if yeah. someone says you don't have to pay that and then the next, in fact they've extended the mortgage holiday for another three months so that will be six months that you could basically put that money onto your capital amount so effectively you're going to be paying that back probably in a lot a lot more over the years as interest charged on that uh, additional sum but at least you're not having to pay for it now it's cash flow it's it's cash but you don't have to pay for the mortgage that you can use for something else that well, it will well, benefit you well, in the short term well what people were i suppose supposed to be using it for was to help pay for their food and pay their bills but i think mm -hmm. what you look at the amount of people getting their driveways done and buying a new shed and buying a hot tub and all that sort of stuff I think it's <laughs> are they gosh yeah it's well, uh, i mean the, the building industry if the building industry could actually get the supplies that they needed um it would be off the chart i mean we've been talking about getting some um some some uh, small decking area um and the, the place i rang up is sort of sold out of the, the color we wanted but they they were short two hundred and two and a half thousand panels, uh, decking panels, because of pre-orders uh, from over the phone. No yeah. more orders online. Uh, yeah. There was a, a, a paving company which was having to do two drops a day because um, they, they just couldn't keep up with demand at one drop a day. So the lorries having to refill up at lunchtime and then just go back out again, which they never. That's normally extraordinary. Do. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I think we all talk about taxes and how it's all going to be paid for. And at some stage, taxes are going to rise. But I actually think taxes are going to be cut before they, they go up again. And I think they're going to cut VAT. And, you know, if they cut stamp duty or gave a stamp duty holiday, 
if they, when people move home, they buy carpets, they buy white goods, Absolutely. they buy curtains. The, yeah. the, the shot in the arm to the economy would just be massive. A VAT cut would also act in the same way, but whether the I government will do it or not, but I think that's what they should do. They, they need to do something, as long as it's not something ghastly like the help to buy scheme, which I think all that does is just allows um, house builders to put their prices up 20% um, yeah. or 5%. Yeah. Don't, don't put the control uh, with the, um, that side of thing. This should be a short term measure anyway, if they just cut the VAT rate for six months or, or so. Um, that and, would, and, that and you know, and, and the other thing, I mean, I, I said the, the wake up to one interview this morning, you know, one lady that's being interviewed, I can't remember yeah. she was representing now, but the first thing she she was said was, you know, just to applaud the you know the positive comments from some of the people that are being interviewed, and that's the sort of thing that we need to hear because that's the thing that's mm. going to get us back out spending again is hearing good yeah. news. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I've stopped listening, I've stopped watching news because it's just so negative, yeah. constantly yeah. Yeah. bashing you over the head about stuff that oh how horrible it all is. Mm. That's not what people should be hearing. Yeah, I know we need a sense of reality, but you need the yeah. positives as well. Yeah, the financial press are the most even-handed, and where the Financial Times and the Economist are the uh, the better reads because they, they don't tend to have any axe to grind, and it's uh, very much sort of just reporting the facts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good. Okay. Um, anything else to to discuss, Mr. Miller? Uh, no, that's pretty much it, really. Um, yeah, it's just interesting times. Will will, will the markets carry on in their recent trajectory, um, or will reality dawn on them? I don't know. <laughs> Well, time will tell. Tune in next yeah. week's podcast, I guess, and we'll, 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 yeah, one, good... we'll be one week closer to finding out. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so look, uh, those of you who would like to learn a little bit more, uh, we are running some live uh, events this week. Actually, you might like to come along. Um, so if you would like to come along and see us, I'm just actually just showing my screen now where you can come on to uh, learn one of our trading strategies or one of our live trading events. So um, you can see the short link on screen, but if you're listening to the podcast uh, and not watching it, um, I'll read it out now. So it's a short link, so bit.ly, so bit.ly slash learn ts so bit.ly slash learn ts and you can register for one of our live events um, and uh, we'll teach you one of our strategies and help you uh, to be in the right place to pick up some great opportunities as this market volatility continues um, and as for the uh, podcast you can continue to tune in uh, to the podcast uh, you can look at our website trend-signal.com slash trendsignal-blog bit of a mouthful that one uh, but just go to our website trend-signal.com and click on the blog page it's probably the easy way to describe it um, alternatively um, we are uh, posting it all up on itunes soundcloud spotify and youtube all you need to do is just search for the Trend Signal podcast. Uh, otherwise, everybody, uh, stay safe and um, keep your risk managed. And we'll be back again this time next week. So goodbye for now. Okay, bye now.